Welcome to our second vlog. Um, today I want to talk about how to identify uh, an ant, you know, find out what species your ant is. Uh, if you capture one, especially if you capture a queen, you're probably very interested what kind of species you have because that is very important for further steps to know, to know what kind of needs your queen has. And uh, today I want to show you how to identify uh, your queen using a web page called antweb.org. Um, this is this web page is very uh, important because it has a huge database of ants, and you most likely will find your ant on this web page. Uh, there are other web pages as well that were, are very helpful, but uh, I show you just I show you, show you this one because uh, it just has the largest database. So um, so uh, if you have found a queen, for example, you know let's, let's take a queen. You can do the same thing for with workers as well. You know if you have a worker ant. And you want to find out what kind of species it is, but uh, most likely you will use it to identify a queen. Um, the first thing you should do if you found a queen, take pictures of her, take good pictures of her, try to take pictures from profile view and try to take pictures from a, a, a top view and you know different angles and so on. Try to have them sharp and not, not blurry. And if you have a 4K camera, that's of course a, a huge help. If you have a of course, if you have a macro lens or something like that, it's even better. But uh, very few people have macro lenses laying around. So um, if you get, try, just try to get a photo as good as possible with, a mu with much, as much light as possible because it's easier to see the colors then. And uh, if you have the photo, then you can go to the uh, web page, antweb.org. Uh, you're going to use the photo to compare it. You know, For example, I take this example, that's a queen um, I found last year. Uh, let's use her as an example. You've, you've found this queen and we want to to see um, what kind of queen it is. Now there are a couple of things that you might, uh, that I want to tell you in a, in a, before we go to the web page. Uh, it's the name of uh, the name of the different parts of the ant. It's, it's good to know. You know we have this part here is the head. Of course that's very simple. This part here is called thorax, um, and this part here is called abdomen. And the biggest part of the abdomen, this here, is the guster. And those are very important parts um, because they they all have their uh, you know their signature uh, shapes and colors and so on. That will always all those things will help you uh, identify your ant. You know, interesting things, interesting stuff is uh, go away. Um, <coughs> It's the shape, you know, the shapes, especially for example, the shapes of the back or something like that. That's always interesting. Um, the the relation, the size relations of head and and thorax and abdomen and so on. Also the shapes of the head. Uh, if you have good photos of the head, that can be helped as well. Especially also the mandibles, you know, the the those 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 we call them mandibles. If you have a good photo from from the front and where you can see the mandibles, this can be help as well. But Let's go to the home page now. Um, if you go to the home page, that's how it will look like at the beginning. It's called antweb.org, that's the URL. You can find it in this description as well, the link. And um, you have your queen now and you want to find the ID. And it can be a little bit overwhelming if you see all this stuff. Uh, basically what you have to do at the beginning is go to your country or, or country where you have found the queen. So in our case it's Switzerland. We go to Europe, Western Europe, Switzerland here. Here we go. And uh, you're greeted with this kind of page that doesn't really help you at, at this time. Uh, go to images, and uh, well, the easiest way is go to images and then go to species. So you will get photos of of e each species that is that lives in your country. Um, at the beginning, you know that's what you see at first, and that it's not really helpful because. Uh, the heads, is, it's a very difficult way to start with the head, you know. So we change that, we're going to change that. We want to have the profile view, not the head view. Maybe. Yeah, now it works. Now it's, we are on profile, right? Now we can see in profile. Now the other thing is we, have, we want to identify a queen. So um, right now cost is, uh, we need to change the cost. Uh, if you want to identify a worker, go for worker. But in our case, we want to identify the queen, so we go for queen. So it shows pictures of queens. The thing is, not uh, it might be that not every species that that is in your country has pictures of all of all castes, right? You know, so there might be, it might be that if you go to queens, um, your species will not appear. 
because there's no queen picture of the certain species. But uh, in the meantime, the, the database is really big, so it should work out for most countries. So uh, one thing to look at it when we start, you know, one thing to really uh, be able to 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 make a quick selection or is you know how many nodes you have between the thorax and the gaster, you know, the, this part in the middle here actually, you can hardly see it, but you can see this here, this part, that's what we call a node, and ants have either one node or two nodes, um, and as we can see here, there's just one node, this is this part, uh, the picture is not that the greatest picture, I'll show you a different picture where you can see it a little bit better here, you can see it, you know, if you, if you go Zoom in a little, uh, it's a bit too much. If you go here, um, you can see here this part, right? There's like this this section here, the section that connects the the thorax and the gaster. We call it uh, nodes, and in this case, it's just one node, and that already helps a lot. You know, let me show you a picture of an ant with two nodes, just as an example. You know, here we have two nodes, right? One, two, and. Uh, this already helps because it will help you to uh, narrow the search right at the beginning. You know, um, some people you don't really see it good, but here are two notes. Uh, here you can't see it, but here is one note, for example. And uh, this already helps at the beginning. You know, there are a lot of ads with two notes here, as you can see, and you can you can all count them all out. You know, as you see when you see them, you know immediately that can't be it because it has two notes. If you cannot really, see, if, you, if you really can't see a note at all, that probably means that it only has one note. For example, here you cannot see it, but but every ant has this note. But sometimes it's hard hard to see. You know, it's like hidden. It looks like being here. For example, it looks like being a part of the of the of the thorax, but it's always there. You know, so here it's quite quite visible. So um, what I'm doing now is. I have the picture in front of me and I have those pictures and I go through it and I look at the shape of the back, I look at the shape of the of the gaster. What I don't really, it's not optimal on web, uh, on ant web, is that, that the pictures are actually cut, you know, that doesn't really help, uh, it's too bad I, I, that it, it is that way, but it, it just is the way, so we have to work with it. So what I'm doing usually, I go through those pictures and I just make opening a new tab that, that those um, uh, and species that look look a little bit similar, you know, and then I go to the to the to the uh, to the, go through all the tabs. Very often I have dozens of tabs often open, and uh, very often you will see this here, you know, zero queen specimens imaged, and the reason for that is you know is that. It will at the beginning it will only show uh, photos of or pictures of queens that have been photographed in your country or in the, in the region that you're looking for, and uh, but uh, in this example, for example here there has been no picture made in Switzerland of a Campanotus lateralis queen, but you can always click here on see global set and it will show you the different pictures of made in, in different countries, and it's the same species so it doesn't really matter, so. Let's go through all of them and press on global set. Can load. Here is actually a picture, but it's a really bad one. You know, you see the the, the gaster is missing somehow. So somebody probably picked up an all an uh, dead and <laughs> only half of it is there. So uh, we go to global set as well. Probably find better pictures of her. So uh, now we have we have pictures here. For example, this is Campanotus phallax. Uh, let's go and, and have a look at it, and, and you'll get more information. We it's the same here. You know, we do it. It's, it's it's really slow right now, so I don't know why. But um, so let's open it well, so we don't have to wait. You know, so if you open now a, a, a bigger picture, you you can see it larger. You know, you can have it right in front of you. And then you can see the whole picture as well. It's not cut off like the other one, so you can see the whole. One. And at first sight, you can see you know it doesn't look right. The head is too big. If you compare it with the picture, well, that's the wrong one. Huh? Um, if you compare it with the picture, the head should be smaller in comparison to the rest of the body. And also, what immediately jumps out is the size. You know, if you see the size, it's one millimeter, so it's one, two, three, four, five, maybe six millimeters. Now, our queen is more like. 
18 millimeters long so uh, or 16 to 18 millimeters so this doesn't really fit so th that way you will be able to very quickly you know close a couple of tabs that you see you know that, that it can't be a, it cannot be this this kind of queen here's the same picture you know a one millimeter that's too small it cannot be this queen and also the color doesn't really seem to fit um, now probably if you go through it you know for a while of course now I, I cheated a little because I already know which species it is so uh, of course I opened uh, one of those two it's, it's the actual species the species we're talking about uh, probably you will not be as fast because uh, you don't know it in advance so usually what happens after a while you know it takes a while it, ta it takes a little bit of patience and uh, but after a while usually you have maybe two or three um, species often open that look very similar to each other and that's why what happens very often because very often there are species that look extremely similar to each other sometimes it's almost impossible to tell them apart and but usually those species are very closely related to each other so um, even if you if it's almost impossible to tell them apart um, it's not that bad because very often they have the same behaviors and if you know it's one of those two you can google them and find out stuff about them and uh, and they behave very uh, similar very often um, but what you what I really suggest you to do when you have those kind of things try to get ad uh, additional information for for example optical here the, the difference is are very slim you know we have Campanotus herculianus we have Campanotus lignipertus they look very similar and uh, really hard to tell apart uh, if but you can Google them now and, and you will find more information about them. For example, what you can find out here in Switzerland is that Campanotus herculianus lives in the mountains and Campanotus lignopertus lives in the valleys. So if you found her, found your queen in the valleys, it's most likely that Campanotus lignopertus. If you found her in the, mountain, in the mountains, it's most likely herculianus. You can find them out by, by Googling. You can also very often find nuptial flight times out by Googling and very often Sometimes they are, have different nuptial flights times, you know, for example, if you find out, you know, that one has nuptial flights in June and the other has nuptial flights in August and you found her in June, that helps as well. And uh, as soon as you have a name, as soon as you have some names, you know, like Campanus Lignaperda, um, this will help you just by Googling it or using the, uh, different web pages. There are a lot of different web pages that can really be a help for end keepers. And you probably will find out what species you have. Sometimes it's almost impossible, you know. Uh, let's an example here. I know, for example, this here, you know, Formica roof and Formica sanguine, sanguinea, um, we have both the species. They look exactly the same, almost the same and they have very similar behaviors and uh, nuptial flight times and everything, you know, and that's it's very difficult to keep them apart now it's not loading but it doesn't really matter um, even 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 professionals sometimes have extreme difficulties to to set them apart but it doesn't really matter because they behave the same way well in this case this case is actually a bad example because you cannot keep them at all because both of them are protected here in Switzerland but uh, for example Campanotus herculianus and Campanotus lignopertus here they behave the same way, you know, they, are, they have the same way of founding a colony. So even if you're not sure which one of those it is, uh, usually the queens have the same needs, so you can already care for them. Um, in our case, we, I know it's, it's Campanus lignipertus because there are different uh, indicators. Uh, well, <laughs> it's written lignipertus here. Um, that's a little bit of discussion if it's called lignipertus or lignipertus don't want to start this discussion here but the thing one thing is the colors it's there's more brown in lignipertus than in in herculianus and also lignipertus are a little bit longer than herculianus and if you have especially if you have two queens a herculianus and lignipertus next to each other you can see the difference in coloration in size and that can help you and uh, especially here in Switzerland, it's where I found her. You know, I found her in the valley. I have at the same time I found a couple of Herculianus in the mountains, so uh, I know exactly where I found them, and this helps as well. So, as soon as you have a name, a, a species name, you can Google it and find all the other information on Antweb. There is basically no other information in the pictures. You know, you can, you don't really have much information about the species here on Antweb. 
but there are a lot of other other uh, very good pages that can help you and if you have a name a species name you will find information that's no problem so I hope this will help you to identify your ants your queen um, if you if you still have trouble if it's still cannot find the ID, go to the, go to Facebook, go to Reddit, there are a lot of forums out there as well. Um, there are ant keeper groups in Reddit, in Facebook and so on. Join one of these groups, uh, share your pictures, tell the people where you found the queen, that's very important, how, how large the queen is, because very often on those photos you cannot see the size. And if people know the location and have a good photo of a queen and know the size, then very often you will get help, people will tell you what kind of and it is, and that's the other possibility to to find the ID of your ant. But uh, I think it's very very interesting to use AntWeb and find it out yourself because it's like a little bit detective work, and uh, it's a lot of fun actually um, to do it and really find out what kind of ant you have in front of you. Yes, I hope that helps. And yeah, if you like this vlog, please subscribe hit the bell icon and leave us a like. Uh, we'll do more vlogs in the future. I hope this has helped. Thank you very much.